I just kept thinking like Chucky is like Santa, you know, he just loves chimneys, he comes down the chimney, you know, just in time for the holidays, he's got the little, you know, little feet prints of his little shoes running around the house. Kristen, and we are talking about episode 6 of Sci-Fi's Chucky series. In this episode, we get to see even more players from the past finally come into the season, and I am so excited to talk about it. This episode starts with Kyle and Andy making their way back to the franchise. They have been basically hunting down Chucky dolls from the cult of Chucky. And now, I kind of wish that we had been able to see more of that. In this episode, they pretend they're part of like the Census Bureau, and they like talk to this family and end up killing uh, one of the Chucky dolls, and they say that that's the last one other than, you know, the main Chucky that we've been following in this show. It kind of would have been cool if there was like a couple of other Chucky's still floating around. They've already basically defeated most of them. The reality is actually there's just one doll and also Nika. But the way that they killed this Chucky was pretty cool. There was like blood everywhere and I was like, oh geez, okay. <laughs> Like, that looked pretty awesome. They did a lot of references in this episode back to past movies, how Andy was in military school, and so you know, they're, they're bringing all those references and connections back. I gotta say though, I think Andy felt a little bit wooden, like a little stiff in the episode. What I'm assuming is that Jake and Lexi and Devin are going to end up teaming up with Andy and Kyle to take down Chucky and, you know, figure out what's going on with Nika and Tiffany. Andy Barkley? Jake Wheeler. You know about Chucky and you're still alive makes you one of the lucky few. It's a shitty club to be in, but welcome. We do get another flashback in this episode to like a young adult Tiffany and Chucky together buying that iconic car that Tiffany always drove. I did also think that it was funny that in the car, Chucky was reading like a beginner's guide to voodoo. That was really, you know, a nice call to what was gonna be happening in the future. I did notice that it looked like they were filming them a little bit further away, maybe so that they could have the voiceover not look so weird. I think it was a little bit better than how they handled it in last week's episode when it came to that flashback and using the, the dubbed over voices. And guys, we still need to talk about the fact that Fiona Dorif, the actress who plays Nika and is Brad Dorif, who's the voice of Chucky's real life daughter, is playing young adult Charles Lee Ray. That is her in prosthetics. We didn't talk about it last episode and we just need to talk about it now because I am so floored by that performance. She really looks exactly like her dad that I thought that was just another young man acting as Charles Lee Ray. I didn't realize that was actually Fiona. So kudos to her, honestly deserves all of the awards. She is just so talented. And I think it's really interesting now that Nika is being triggered to kind of get out of Chucky's spell and that the two of them are sort of fighting over you know, her body. There's even a point where Nika is pretending to be Chucky and Tiffany realizes it and talks about how she likes being with Nika better anyway. I'm wondering like, are they gonna bond? Is Nika going to be able to get away from her? Or is she going to actually fall for Tiffany too? And then we find out that Tiffany has bought Chucky's house and then she kind of like locks Nika up in there and who knows what she's gonna do next, but I thought that was very evil. And the way that she was treating Nika, like sort of babyish, reminded me of The Bride of Chucky when she was treating Chucky like a baby when he was a doll and like locked him in the playpen. And also at the house is that woman who <laughs> Chucky tricked on Halloween and she's like the realtor selling it and she also has a package for Tiffany that's arrived early and it definitely looks like another Chucky doll. Like I think that that maybe could be hinting that there are more Chuckies or I mean it could be a Tiffany doll too which be, would be very interesting. This episode they also think that the teacher is the one who committed all these crimes. I don't know how they really put that together. It didn't make much sense but then I started really thinking because I've heard some people saying like could the teacher be like Glenda or Glenn and I'm like oh my gosh wait what if she is involved in some way. So far they didn't really like go any further than that in this episode. I think they're trying to just prove that she's innocent, but I just thought that was very interesting, especially since I know people had been like speculating like what if she was Glenda? And just basically everything's going bad for Junior right now. He thinks it's super weird that Lexi has now gotten close to his cousin and he dumps her. He, you know, finds out that his mom is sick and then she dies. And everyone thinks that she committed suicide, although we all know that Chucky using a mail cart, pushed her out a window, which, again, is that very realistic? I don't know. Those must have been really thin glass windows. Uh, but she ends up flying out and crash landing on the car. That was a crazy death because, ooh, like that landed right on the car in front of her son. Terrible. 
oh my god, that kid's gonna be scarred for life. After all of this, I think it's pretty clear to the detectives, to everyone, that Jake was not the one responsible for any of these deaths that have been going on. It just kind of, it's like, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Then the detective and Devin end up having a really nice moment where, you know, Devin finally reveals to his mom that, like, you know, I do like Jake, and she accepts him, and it was a really nice, genuine moment. We're out of time, and we need your help. How do we find him? Oh, you don't have to find Chucky. He'll find you. They end up realizing they don't need to go after Chucky, he's gonna come after them. So they set up this whole plan based off of a horror movie about like setting a booby trap. And uh, Chucky comes down the chimney. I mean, Chucky's like Santa, he loves the chimney, he's done it before. Throw back to that first Child's Play movie. You see those tiny little, little feet prints. And of course, he's trying to, you know, finish off where he started, which is going after Lexi. Although, guys, I had said, <laughs> right, I had said, I don't trust Chucky. What if he changes sides and he's like, alright Lexi, I'm on your side, now let's go get Jake. And that's what he says! He says like, Lexi, you want to kill Jake, don't you? Like, let's do it! And then, you know, they all work together to try to get Chucky, they tase him, they're going after him. There's one point where I'm like, Devin, just, just kick Chucky in the face, like just kick him! Chucky ends up getting away and he causes Devin's mom, who's the detective, to fall down a flight of stairs and break her neck and die. And I'm like, why is she even there to begin with? How did she even get in this house. So I'm really curious if they're gonna explain that. Like, why was she even there? I mean, it was nice that she had that moment with Devin before she died, but like, my god, they were just killing moms off in this episode. And I feel like Chucky's kind of playing the long con. Like, he could have easily killed all those kids, but instead he's killing the people around them instead to hurt them even deeper, which I think is just very menacing and evil. So honestly, they got through a lot. They got through a lot in this episode. They really you know, tackled a little bit of everything. We did the flashback, we got to see a lot of people die. I was really glad to see, you know, that they're really bringing Kyle and Andy and Nika and Tiffany into the story now. We've got like two more episodes left, I think. So I'm really curious to see how things are gonna wrap up, where are we gonna end. I'm assuming that they're going to be ending in a place where we can go into a season two because I think the show has been really successful so far. Um, so there's just a lot to think about, a lot to contemplate. I feel like there's still more Chuckies out there. I think there's more Chuckies out there. So I guess we'll see what happens. I'd love to hear you guys' theories, so make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out the exclusive Discord available on my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!